Here we go. The Real Kipper and Bourne Show. We are live on Sportsnet 590, Sportsnet 360, Sportsnet Plus from 4 to 6. You can always download us wherever you get your pod. Texas 590, 590, it's Thursday. Not off the rails Friday like I thought it was on Wednesday. It can be sort of off the rails Thursday. We can work our way off the rails this week if you want. We can do a lot of things. You know why? Because it's leap day today. Doesn't exist this day. You can do anything. You can break laws. Doesn't exist. Leap day. Right? Are you under the impression... What, Sammy? Go ahead. I'm tangled up over here, boys. I <laughs> Just don't fall, Sammy. I got all this stuff We're, going yes. on. Don't Sammy's spill anything. having a tough week. I am having a tough week. Any He's... updates on your car? My car is done, I think. It's just not in good shape. It crashed my head in the boards. Concussion, yeah. Uh... Poison myself with chili. <laughs> I made chili, and my guts are ravaged, boys. It's it's been a horror show all day. If, and then uh, Chris Tanov gets traded. Oh, it's just been a tough week. But if Sammy disappears from the screen, he's got the runs. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? You're right. What what coach was it that threw one of his players? Oh, was it uh, Daryl Sutter talking about Jonathan Huberdeau? It was like his second game there. They're like, where did Huberdeau go? And he's like... Yes. He actually used the the H or the S-H word. He did. Yeah. He went to take a shot. I won't won't do that on on national television. I, I know you both hate this day in history. There's not a few things you hate more, both I'm of you. I'm really proud that our show does not really do this day in history. I know, you both hate it. Yeah. But on this day in Leafs history, the Maple Leafs acquire Nick Kiprios and Wayne Presley from the New York Rangers for Bill Berg and Sergio Mameso. So there you go, buddy. On this day. Blockbuster. That's a compliment. I think those are good players you got traded for. You didn't get traded for a bag no, of pucks. No, no. Not a all, conditional eighth round pick. All serviceable guys. Yeah. Right? They could do hockey. Yeah. Take so that. technically that was like seven years ago, right? <laughs> yeah. Can we say that? That it trade was. was seven years ago? The last seven. August, the last seven. February 29th. Yes. Ago. Yeah. So how, as a Toronto guy, it was just what was the feeling when yeah. you got the call that you got traded to the Leafs? Yeah, give us where were you? What yeah, happened? Yeah, I was in my apartment. 80th in Columbus. What a pad. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. You know, in 1994, yeah. so I get traded from Hartford. I was paying like $280 <laughs> a month for okay. rent in Hartford. Yeah. Feels like- and then I go to the Ranger dressing room and, Mar- and Messier is like, where are you living? And I said, I have no idea. He goes, you're going to live in the city. You're married? No. Okay, you're living in the city. Yeah. I said, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> Any idea, like, you know what a ball yeah what is, give me a ballpark Messier, yeah some somewhere around 3 grand oh this is 19 oh my god 1994 that's like 15 grand right now right? so i got my good buddy Brian Noonan noodles to uh go have these on a on a on a second oldest building in new york city next to the dakota you know the famous dakota yeah. isn't that where uh john Lennon. yeah got shot was your apartment, so, shared apartment, bigger or smaller than Jerry Seinfeld? Uh, we almost had 2,000 uh, square feet. You were living. And uh, uh, like 25 foot ceilings. Oh, my God. I mean, good years. So, yes. So, so I'm in this feel? apartment. Yes. I'm Hartford it, to that. Yes. That's outhouse, penthouse <laughs> stuff. So I'm in this apartment by myself, and I just, you get a call from Neil Smith. He goes... Uh, I had to make a couple changes, uh, and I, I traded you, and I'm like, damn, I'm looking at this apartment going, bye-bye. <laughs> <No. laughs> and he says, uh, you want the good news? I said, sure. Uh, you're going you're gonna to go home. I'm trading you at your, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Wow. And I'm like, then my heart sunk, right? Sunk. It just it sunk with like, okay, what is this, this, is, this is my childhood dream team, mm. right? And it was like, now everything became almost surreal. So you went from hanging with Madonna in downtown New York, and then you're living <laughs> with your parents in, uh, in oh, yeah. town? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It's true. I'll it's never, just coming home. I'll never yeah. forget uh, leaving my parents' house to go to my first Toronto Maple Leaf practice at Maple Leaf Gardens. Yeah. And like people are driving down the DVP 
recognizing me and giving me the thumbs up. It was like, <laughs> wow. Now you're now you're in a city where they they yeah. truly truly recognize you. And New York's great too. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, different but different type of great. No, listen. You're 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 six in line behind the Yankees, the Mets, yeah. the Giants. Yeah. Right? As much as Elias Pettersson wants to go there, it's not yeah. the best <laughs> Petey. Just so move technically on. though, are, are, are we working for free today? You know, are, are you I one did of those, read something about this. Are you yeah. one of those guys that believes that, you know, this is an extra day sure, on the calendar? Sure, I have a that, yearly salary. Today's an extra day. I'm making a lower per day rate this year. What are we, Doug McClain now on our show? <laughs> yeah. That was a There's, hot, hot button issue in my group chat this morning with the guy being like, I shouldn't have to work today. It oh doesn't count. So there you go. You're not the only ones talking about it. You know All right. I, I, when you do what you love, you you're never, never work. working. <laughs> you never work. Oh, day oh very nice. Thank you. Very nice. You know who's got to go to work tonight? The Toronto Maple Leafs. It's game day on our Leaf edition of the Real Kipper and Bourne show, and we're going to be working uh, the game tonight. We are. 7 o'clock puck drop, 6.30 yeah, six pregame. The show starts in nine seconds. We're, it's literally up in less than two and a half hours, so this show's two hours long for Hopefully context. you'll have time to buy, uh, get us something to eat. Um, yeah. Or well, what do we do now? Like Snacks is an issue again. Oh, pick oh, something no. up we're for us, live. okay? We're going to live. We'll, All right. we'll get something ordered. Uh, <laughs> the snacks. <laughs> this man needs his snacks. He's a snack. But he, like, it's through the gut. My whole life is through the gut. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe there'll be some euros waiting for us. My whole life was coming out of my guts. More where Chris Tanev ended up <laughs> getting Chris traded. Chris Tanev, that's right. Uh, the biggest, yeah. biggest news of the Everybody's day. waiting. Everybody's know, waiting know, for, for our thoughts or your thoughts, Sammy's thoughts, and I'll, I'll throw my two cents in as well. But uh, before we touch on Toronto, Arizona, big trade last night. At least the biggest fish out there. The defenseman that was on the top of everyone's list is traded. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, for a lot of Leaf fans, it wasn't to the blue and white. Best thing to do, I think, is to start with the most passionate opinion in <laughs> the room on this. Samuel? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. It hurts. Yeah, hurts. He actually really is bothered yeah. by this. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm reading a lot of what people are saying about just fans in general about them not getting Chris Tanev and a lot of, oh, he's 34, he's a UFA, he's this, he's that. It's like he's also really good mm -hmm. and a perfect fit. And if I'm a Flames fan, I think I'm a little bit underwhelmed by what they got back. It's he is the number one option at a trade deadline. He's a right hand shot. There's multiple teams that are wanting him that are coveting his services. I, I would have happily traded the first round pick to get him. I, I know that's probably a controversial opinion, but it's just you're trying to win in five years or you're trying to win this year. He's perfect. Yeah. And it's a tough blow for Leaf fans. And I'm surprised that people are trying to sort of, you know, gloss over it a little bit. Oh, just like they're coping a bit. They'll be like, ah, oh, he's hurt all the time. He's old. He's, he's also perfect. And he would have just been, he would have made this team so much better, fellas. Yeah, I like the argument about the fit thing for the Leafs. Like, uh, you know, Bunkus and I have been intermittently on the air together for a lot of years now. And the one complaint with the Leafs decor is that it never quite fits. You can like the pieces, but you don't have lefty righty and PK PP. And like, it's not, he was a fit yes. for the Leafs. And so it is a significant loss, even if you don't think the player himself was worth what would have been a call it a 23rd overall pick or something next year for the Leafs. So, um, yeah, Dallas gets him for 1.25. And frankly, that puts them in the conversation with best decor and with oh, yeah. Vegas to me in the West they, among cup. Yeah, and they're going to go get another D they've made it real Dallas clear. Will. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, Jeez, they wanted to already two. loaded back. They, they wanted to No, 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 they're not loaded. They still need, so they really need some like testers. Harley, really yeah. like, uh, I like that. Hawk yeah. and Paul, uh, obviously Lindell. Tyson and Lindell. Yeah. Now Tanev, like, yeah. And they want one more. But I told you guys a long time ago, you want to think about winning championships, you need to be in 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 depth with eight or nine of these guys, mm -hmm. not yeah. six. Guys get hurt. Fillers need to come in. But the thing is, Kip, sorry to yeah. interrupt, but I like the Leafs seven, eight, nine guys. I feel like they're serviceable. Like you can plug in whether it ends up being mm. Benoit, Giordano, Lagasin. Yeah, I you don't know. agree with you at all. I think no? they're so think weak one of, back there. One of Benoit or Jordano is likely out to start playoffs. Benoit? I think Benoit's in, in the sixth then? All day okay. long. I did too, actually, now that I think of it. All day long. Okay, so Jordano's probably out. That's a mm -hmm. nice seven to come in. I, mean, I, like, I got Benoit my four right now. Yeah. No, you're right. You're Which right, you're probably right. isn't the best 
thing. Yeah, that yeah. in of itself is probably I, not awesome. You mentioned earlier the week about the sort of, you know, I don't know if, how you worded it, but the half measures thing in terms of what they've done with the top pairing. To me, Chris Tanev was the only full measure on the market. Yeah, now where it's, it's like, be talk yourself you, into Lelouch, you, This Kim is a too. guy that can legitimately play over 20 minutes a night on a top pair, shown that he can do it with an offensive guy in Quinn Hughes, done it in, in Calgary. Now everybody else is like, oh, great, Labouche. Well, we saw that. How'd that end? First round exit. See, I'm, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll put on a, a Leaf hat. I'll put on his booster club yeah. hat for a second. I'm extremely disappointed that the Leafs didn't get Chris Tanev. Mm. Me too. There's not a team, and I include Dallas, that needed him more I than the Toronto a... Maple Leafs. Good argument. Mm -hmm. So uh, now it's plan B. I, yeah, I imagine if I'm Brad Tree living and I'm listening to the show, which I'm sure he does every day. Every day. I'm sure he is thinking like, look, this was not what you guys thought it was where you could have just given him that first and that was it. Like, it's very possible that they said, we're only doing it for Minton or we're only doing it for, you know, like, because it's yeah. Toronto, that I, leaf tax. I, I believe though, and, you know, we've talked about, uh, Maybe some friction between Calgary and, and Brad Tree living, but I also believe that there was a chance for the Leafs to still get Tanov, and maybe it was all things being equal. It's a second rounder and this and this, but for you, the Toronto Maple Leafs, you only get them if it's a, a first. Yeah, and that's to Sammy's point where you go, okay, um, you weigh out to twenty second or twenty third first round draft choice so every scout that i've talked to so far tells me that between 18 and 32 it, it sinks toss. it's no yeah it's a to coin between toss it, but it sinks yeah it sinks so on a decent draft 18 to 32 this draft would be like mid second any other draft any other better draft yeah. so we are talking about a, a, a devalued later first round pick than in other draft years so weigh that out mm -hmm. the only thing i'm hoping for leaf fans is that if he didn't spend it on tanov he's gonna spend it somewhere else because he needs help well can we yeah. if i can throw to a clip um because brody and riley are playing together again tonight and um Keith was asked about this, and he gave an extremely honest answer that plays right into the conversation we're having. So, if Derek, if you could play clip five for us, it'd be great. Yeah, you talk, you, you talk through all the different options that we have, which we've got six lefties again here tonight. We're in a jam right now, right? Without Lilligan being out and, and put Timmins in that, you know, being out as a right shot. That sort of just having those righties kind of lets, lets things sort of fall into place. Now, when, when you have uh, the, the lefties, it, it it, it uh, jams things up. Then you, you look at Brody's situation. To me, he played better on the left side of late. Um, but we're in a jam right now. Yeah, so we talk through all the different options, and ultimately, you just when you're in a jam like this, you just have to fall on on what uh, has worked for you over time. Maybe it's not going the best right now, but it's worked well for us. Ben Long McCabe, we know, has, has worked really well for us. So splitting that up, we don't know if that really helps our cause. How many times did he say jam there? Yeah. Well, it's one of those things where he's almost like, let's say our power play wasn't working and we don't have good power play players. Here's why we're playing bad guys. You know, like, it's just like you don't have a different choice, really. So, you know, Leafs have six left shot guys. Arizona has played six right shot D this year. They're, they're, they've got four, I, four I, right shotters I, tonight. I, I mean, maybe this is just more of a, let's dump on Kyle Dubas again for a second, but... Like we're, we're, we're over the last few years is your stockpiling of right D. Buddy, Connor Timmons. Okay. Connor Timmons. Connor Timmons, and that, and he's hurt. And you have no other options in your organization in a year that you're supposed to be contending for the Stanley Cup. Are you kidding me? Like, where's the attention to detail over the last few years, Kyle? to have had a better balance of right-handed D in your system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess Lilligren's kind of been the only one 
that you've been waiting on to come along. And then every year you're picking up a new one at the deadline, like Lavushkin coming over. And now you're, you you got to put Brody on a side that you know is a disaster. You're setting him up to fail. Like yeah. we all, like going back, he says you lean on old things. And I get that as a coach. When you're the coach, what else are you supposed to do? And I don't blame him for doing it. Everyone likes but, Benoit McCabe. But we're all watching it. Yeah. And it's just really minus eight combined last game. It's just not a situation that's a tenable one to me. Yeah, no, it's not. And so that that hurt makes the Tanev stuff. That's why. Sting an extra little bit. It's just I can't imagine how much better immediately they are with Tanev. Yeah. I'm, I'm just hoping that, that Brad Tree Living didn't waste too much time focusing in on trying to get from November yeah. for Zdorov and and Chris Tanov and someone told me the other day that he was actually thought there might be a chance that he could get Hannafin and I hope he just didn't waste all his time on on Calgary and he didn't work on some other things here because yeah. it's getting crunch time here and he needs he needs to pull a rabbit out of his hat right now for for some D. Bad luck that all the available D that the Leafs need were on the team he's coming from. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that did not fall in their favor. Like, um, do you, how much of the, like if they offer a first, they get him. They, they, they forego the, the, the Toronto tax for that, Kipper? Like I'm asking, I, I don't know how big them not wanting to deal with Toronto was a factor in this, but it feels like if they give up the first, they probably get him, no? I believe that's the case. Yes, I do. I think... Well, first of all, like, if you turn it down and that that word gets out that the Leafs offered a first and you took a second and a prospect yeah. from Dallas, you're, you're, you may never work again if yeah. you're Craig Conroy. I mean, so, they also retained, you know? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I do believe that if they would have gone that deep, they weren't willing to do that, which means what? They've got something up their sleeve moving forward here. I guess. Quick question. What's... New Jersey doing. This team is going to finish. Oh, yeah, it's part of that trade. Two points out of a playoff. They retained uh, in exchange for a fourth rounder in 2026. Like, are they not going to get competitive here? Do they know they have 8.3 million in cap space? Are they just punting yeah. on the season because Hamilton's hurt? No, maybe they're like, hey, see how much we're helping you here, yeah. Craig? Want to give us Mark Strom now for cheaper? So, mm. <laughs> the amount. You know, I don't hate the idea, though, that there's some futures involved. There. The, the amount of conversations over probably the last six or eight weeks that have included third teams is probably 85% of the conversations. Everyone so, needs so it. like you can sit there and say, okay, New Jersey just gave up cap space, but it's, everything's an asset. Yeah. Even the money that they took, you can move that money out. You could, ha you could do another deal and you can move that money back out. Mm -hmm. With another third team, you've got a fourth rounder you can play with now. Yeah. So th there's a lot of that juggling going on. Sure. You could, in, in fact, attach a fourth to a pick on retention for someone you want, you know, and, and to get that money yes. back in a way. Correct. Yeah, okay, so there's a lot of balls in the air right now. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, the Leafs should be at the forefront right now of, of trying to come up. Any names coming to you off the top on where where – the Leafs can go for a right shot D. Listen, I'm just rooting for Seattle to tank hard and hoping that they can. Larson. You know, no, that's not I happening. Like Borgen. Borgen's my it's guy. It's not happening. No? No, no. They're happy with their D. They're happy with their goaltending. What do you got? You got a no. name? Uh, David Savard. Yeah. Half measure. Montreal. Half measure. Nah, but it's a good half measure. It is a half measure. I mean, but there's no, there's no available. He's that's got, what I mean. I'm just sour. He, he's, got, sour. Yeah. he's got term. Yeah. And he, he's on. He's he's his name's out there. Mm -hmm. Right-handed D, heavy guy, experienced. I like now, it. do yeah. you do you have to go bigger? You know, you wrote an article today, and I I did skim through it. Thank um, you. But it did mention like three or four things that yeah. the Leafs need to trade for or or do. Yeah, both. Okay. You know, the, the, the handedness of their D needs to be addressed via trade. Okay. That's something they can't sort out themselves. But, yeah, the okay. rest of it was mostly so stylistic. So if, if that's the case, then I don't think, like, 
this can't be one of those trade deadlines for the Toronto Maple Leafs, in my opinion, where you just you spend a, th- a fourth round pick and you bring in Labushkin. I would. Okay. That's where it's going, Kip. That's where this is going. It can't go there. The Leafs are going to get. Yeah, I you know, can't go there. A third or fourth round, or a third or fourth line forward. They've a, th- a third pair D, and they're going to go. We like our guys. They've played that movie before. Yeah, we know how it ends. It ends in a fiery ball of death. So, I <laughs> it's a I'm, dark I'm, ending to the movie every fast, year. I'm hoping that, that Brad Tree Living can pull uh, a three for three or just to change it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think the team needs more than just one right handed guy to come in, especially if it's just a third pairing guy. Mm-hmm. It's funny because Tree has been on the record saying he's uh, a tweaks guy, he doesn't believe you can remake your mm-hmm. roster at mm-hmm. the deadline. I mean, we know what happened last year with the Leafs here where they did remake their roster, um, but people say it didn't work. So, But doesn't mean it wouldn't. It's not like they. there are uh, no concerns in other areas of the, of the roster. Right now, do you have a definitive answer for me when I say who's your second-line centerman in game one of the playoffs? No, I no. don't. I don't. I don't think it's Max Domi. Is that... Uh, do you think it's John Tavares? I mean, I think it probably yeah. is. I don't want it to be, but I think it probably is because I'm not confident that they're going to do something big enough to go get a second line center. It's, I mean, Elias Lindholm moved, uh, Sean Monahan moved. You know, there's not a ton of available good second line centers. At this Adam point. Henry, yeah, can you? Yeah. Is that just another rental, though? Unfortunately. So I like Kenrik and think he helps the Leafs a lot. I think they look a lot better with him. But I just, I don't love like a long-term, you know, trade a whole bunch and sign Henrik. Like, I don't think he's a long-term solution, but would love him as a rental. What's he going to cost? Probably seconds that they don't have. Uh, seven to good n- no, I think a, f- a first. He cost a first? A first. He's only, I mean, he's got 38 points in 57 games, and he's only minus two playing on that Ducks team. If so. you... If I go back to a David Savard, could you do something bigger with the Montreal Canadiens? Would you like Josh Anderson here? Uh, or no? I like but, what you're thinking about. I like the idea of, you know. Gallagher? Yeah, I like Gallagher, and I think he's something they could Sammy? use. He's a left winger. I don't you like Gallagher contract, coming though. in with yeah, David Savard? Now a, we're talking about a big, significant trade. I just have a hard time His believing Habs and Leafs are going to make a trade like that. I don't know. If that's... I don't know. New management on both sides. Not a lot of scars. No, it's just it's the Leafs and the Habs. When's the last? I guess the Placanitz one was the last one they did. Second rounder. Yeah, that was weird. But anyways, but yeah. anyways, we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that uh, as, as it progresses here. Yeah. Do you want to talk about Joseph Wall playing goalie tonight? Sure. That's, that's a happening. positive. Do you want to hear the clip about it? Very much. Okay. Here's Keith clip one on Joe Wall starting. Uh, Joseph's for, uh, preparing to play. So uh, he looks good, feels good. You know, we'll, we'll give him every, you know, uh, every minute that we can. You know, get through the day and and all that kind of stuff. And you know, the plan is for him to to play and be activated tonight uh, before the game. Um, so that is the plan. But like I said, you know, with any player coming off of off of the IR, you give them, you know, as much time as possible to make sure that they're good. But that is the plan. They are so guarded. I hate that. I hate is that it. Not the funny, is that not the funniest clip? Any he's, other coach in the league? Hey, who's Joe Wall goes tonight. Yeah. Next question. Yeah, he's playing. He's the goalie tonight. Joe Wall is the starter. Like, you know, what's going to happen? Like, barring getting hit crossing the road to his car today, he's in. You know, like, barring something. Ha- of course. We always assume any lineup decision made in the morning is barring them getting through the day healthy, but all they're doing is going home to nap and eat pasta. <laughs> hey, have you ever not been hurt, like, jumping in bed? <laughs> I got hurt playing two touchdowns before a game. But yes. Slipped? I get it. Barring right? something happening, he's the guy. So he's playing tonight is what I believe that corporate politician jargon was. That yeah. jargon, that uh, verbal you-know-what. Yeah. So anyway, Joe Wall's back, baby. 85 days between starts for Joseph Wall, I believe. Yeah. 85. Yeah, that's almost three months of days. Yeah, that's I a mean, long time. It is. I'm very excited to see him. 
And because, I think he's starting in the right situation, yeah. right? Coyotes have lost 13 straight games. Should be able to defend decently no well. No Clayton Keller tonight either. Is that right? That's day what to I day. heard. Yeah, day to day. No, there I don't is. think he's playing. No, he's not going to play. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is... Well, this I is, don't know. I mean... Barring, barring something bar, happening. Barring <laughs> slipping on a bar of soap. I don't know. Barring a nap in a cryogenic chamber today <laughs> and him getting it figured out by game time. Sprains a finger, tying yeah. a shoelace. Yeah, uh. so a good place for Wall to make his return tonight and a, a good, I don't know, get it sorted out here before the deadline and get a good couple looks of him. If, if, it, if his ankle breaks off, maybe you can get someone else before the deadline still. Um, yeah, I just think he's really good. And I think... It's good to have him back. He's your number one goalie. He's your starting goalie. And Samson, I was giving them, and, and Martin Jones, mm-hmm. gave them a valiant effort over 85 days where they kept them above, they kept them afloat. Martin Jones, barely. a 907 in the starts this year. Uh, but the, having him back, it's, that's your starting goalie back. It's good. Yeah, let's hear how good it is to have Wool back there in we go. clip two. Beautiful. Yeah, it feels great. Like, because you said how, how he played, but also. You just know how hard the guys work to, to get himself ready and especially probably the last three weeks or so, like he you know, where he's right there, just there's just one last little hurdle for him to get over. Uh so you wanna get him back and he's an important guy for our team and, and you wanna you wanna get him back in the net. There you go. He's back. Um also Kelly Yarncroc practicing. There is a, no roster limit after the trade deadline. So Presumably, if they brought him back, they would have to move someone in the next eight days. So I would imagine Callie Yarncroc's finger is going to get an extra eight days to heal here. Mm. Before we... Call it a hunch. The next thing, I, I don't know why I'm leading this so hard today, but the next thing I wanted to bring up was the, the fine for Keefe mm-hmm. and his comments this morning. Did you... 25K. Thoughts? First of all, how can you get fined 25K for burying somebody on the ice from behind, but you can get 25K for berating the ref? Oh, the ref is... Yeah, it's excessive what's it the fine yeah 25 grand that's a lot i you know but you know how many snacks i could buy for our regional (laughs) games tonight with 25 grand excuse my ignorance here and this is a very ignorant question for someone in my profession do you think that just comes out of sheldon's bank account no leafs pay that for sure no no because they're not on the hook in uh in the cap so right it doesn't really matter do you think MLSE or you know whatever the if MLSE, corporate higher ups like yeah, but yeah. if MLSE turns around to, to Sheldon and say we're not paying for it he's got to pay for it yeah if Presumably they want to be if they want to be nice this, guys they have his back I'm sure they'll be like yeah right? stop doing that somebody in MLSE will go up to the 300 levels and go to one of the beer stands and be like hey give me that 25k and then we'll yeah. uh, I'll go pay if well, Sheldon's fine just but you know how <laughs> just you know how out. I feel about like that it was a useless outcry mm-hmm. to begin with for me. Mm-hmm. If I'm MLSC, I don't need it. Sheldon, you want to go and have a temper tantrum after we've won seven in a row? Then you're paying that thing. Let's not me. listen uh, to Sheldon actually weighed in. He actually today, instead of just completely skipping the yep. questions, he he weighed in on his outburst in clip four. Well, all I'll say that, all I'll say is is you know there's I think there is a there is a fine line between being the voice for the players at different times and to try to be the voice so that they don't have to be, they can focus on playing. But really all I'll say is, is you know, my job as a coach is to really make sure I'm focused on the next moment and what comes next. And and I don't feel like I've lost control or anything like that the other night, but I'm not focused on the right thing. That's not, uh, my job is to be focused on the right thing. Players' jobs to be focused on the right thing. So I'll, I'll be better in that area. It's a chance for me to reflect and, and grow from it. And that's really, you know, all I'll say for me. I think we can move on. Hey, it's got to start... It, that that image of him being a hothead and not having great relationships with the officials, that rehabilitation has to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm fine with that that call. I don't know if it's a message to the league and the officials. I need to be better. I need to grow. Is it an Buddy, olive branch? It, no, it's apology culture. We've all learned the things that people no, say No, 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 no. This is strategic. This is strategic. But this listen. is from... I don't know if it was from yeah. Brendan or Brad Tree Living calling him in the office and going, hey, Sheldon. Yeah. You're going to start walking it back. You're killing us right now. Right. So he said all the points he wanted to say. I didn't think I lost control and that I'm the voice for the players. And then he said the thing he had to say, which was, I'm going to refre- reflect and grow from this. And what else do we say in this day and age? 
I'm learning. I'm listening. You know, I'm listening now. I'm mm. not. This is all the. You know, I'm, I'm going to try to be better. That's hey, not the, who the, I am. The, the 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 voice for the players. I'm not buying that. I like it in theory. I don't think he's been that, but I like I, the I, idea that I the played coach professional does that. hockey for 12 years. You know how many times I turned around after my coach Thanks absolutely now. ripped an official, and I said, "Hey." Thanks for having my I, back. I was thinking the same thing. Hey. He hey. does look like a dope. <laughs> yeah. He is the dumbest it's guy I've ever just, seen. It's just them <laughs> trying to get the next call. Yeah. That's all it is. But, hey, or, is this not the theme of Sheldon's coaching? The trying to win every game. Trying to get the next call without the long-term vision of, like, what, how and then do people look I can't at think of a, a worse way to try to get the next call when it's always just about ripping them but it does work if you're not always ripping them it does work sorry if you're not yes always ripping you're right yes. but it has to be at the right time and yeah. it has to be on the right call and yeah. i get it. it was a phantom call i i'm with you sheldon on a call, bs call Terrible on call. mitch marner yeah but when you go that hard you gotta go that hard on on a different game than mm -hmm. down five game two 57 yeah Mm -hmm. No, I agree with you there. No. Anyways, um, do you want to hit a break? Talk about the Coyotes? Yes, we do need to get to Craig Morgan. Yep. Coyote beat writer with uh, the Phoenix Sports uh, is going to join us next, and we'll get uh, a, a feel on where they're going between now and the trade you deadline. Mean that literally? Or, 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 no. <laughs> or within the season? Both. Okay. Both. Salt Lake? Yeah. <laughs> Salt Lake to the basement to the draft lottery. All right, Craig break. Morgan, when we return, don't go away. More real Kipper and Bourne after these words. Welcome back to the real Kipper and Bourne show. Let's go to Craig Morgan now, who covers the Arizona Coyotes for Phoenix Sports and also uh, does a great job with the NHL Network. So, Craig, the uh, the Maple Leafs have not gotten a home regulation win against the Coyotes since October 17th, 2002, when Trevor Kidd was in the net. Now, as the Coyotes come in tonight's game on a 13-game losing streak, is there a danger that the Coyotes are overconfident tonight? <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a setup. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Well <laughs> it is a it's a bizarre stat, first of all, but then when you look at the situation the Coyotes are in right now, and without Clayton Keller as well, I mean I got a feeling that that streak is ending tonight. Maybe it'll go to OT and they'll get a point and we'll keep this thing going, but Things couldn't be worse for the Coyotes right now, and not not to mention all the stuff that's swirling off yeah. the ice. But this team just has hit an unbelievable tailspin right now—the second longest since they've been in Arizona, just two games shy of that record. And it's crazy to think that on January first, this team was in a playoff spot. Now they're something like seventeen points off the playoff pace. It's but, insane. So, Craig, why? Why like bad goaltending? Where do you where do you pin this on uh, the, the the fall off the cliff here this season? So many things. I, I don't want to pin it on one. I can't ignore the fact that they haven't won a game since the press release came out of Salt Lake City. Um, yeah. Announcing, yeah, announcing that they were ready for expansion. And, oh, by the way, they also have an arena ready for an NHL team right away. The Coyotes haven't won since that release came out. But obviously, that's not all that's at play here. NHL teams need to be able to block that out as much as it can be a factor in the room the goaltending has definitely fallen off. Connor Ingram was playing at an elite level. He hasn't been able to sustain that recently. He was actually out for a couple games with injuries. This team doesn't defend well. That's been a weakness all season. There, there's so many things that have fallen apart during this stretch. I don't want to pin it on one thing. It just feels like a total collapse. They're not getting secondary scoring. As I said, they're not defending well. They're taking bad penalties. They're giving up goals in the first 10 minutes of games. They lead the league in goals against in the first 10 minutes of games. Throw all that together and you have just this perfect storm and this really ugly losing streak. Do you want to stay on uh, off ice first or go but go on the ice? Uh, up to you. Uh, no, I I, I got to dive in because okay. you know you're 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 connected here. So, what what's the deal here on on their ownership group and how long does Gary Bettman give Alex to find land a rink money like 
come on, this has to come to a head. We're we're all sick and tired of it. Yeah, I think it's fair to expect that this this is honestly, I'll go back to the Tempe vote. When the Tempe vote failed, mm-hmm. I walked out of that meeting uh, that uh, honestly, I was at a, a, a an event that was supposed to be a celebration for the Coyotes. They were they were that confident they were going to win it. And then you saw what happened with the vote. When I walked out of those headquarters, I thought it was over. I thought the Coyotes were done in Arizona. A couple days later, the league said it was going to give Alex Morello a little more leash. Um, we we all know that they've been pursuing a couple pieces of land. They looked at a, a piece of land in Mesa, and I don't think that's dead, but I think that everybody knows by now they're focused on a piece of land, state trust land in Northeast Phoenix adjacent to Scottsdale. It's supposed to be on the agenda for the Arizona State Land Department next month, March 14th. And we're hearing that there will be an actual auction for this land probably around mid-June. Now, he's got to win that auction, right? It seems like the league is giving him this one final chance. I I say it seems like because who knows what's happening behind closed doors. But, you know, we heard all the talk of the All-Star game, and then it went quiet. It feels like they're going to give Alex Morello this one last chance. I'm surprised, I have to be honest, that they're giving him another chance. But this has to be it. If Alex can't land this piece of land to build the arena on, they at least have to say goodbye to this ownership group and move on, whether plan B is trying to find another local owner or the nuclear option of going to Salt Lake City. Well, so let's say they get this land. Let's say he wins the auction. Then what? You know, then you're going to play in Mullet Arena for two years while, while they build? Is, would, that, would that be tenable? Uh, and you say two years, it's probably at least three years. Ugh. And that's... That's an important question. Is yeah. the league really willing to allow this to happen for another three years? We know how everybody feels about Mullet Arena. It was okay as a, a temporary solution for one, two, three seasons, but now we're talking five. What happens if there are delays in construction and it's actually six? That to me is, it, it, it's shocking. But I, I also wonder, and I'm sure you guys are aware of the uh, tweets that Richard Rodier put out uh, a while ago. Does the league have the grounds legal grounds to force a sale. I don't know what's in place in terms of agreements. Is there a proxy agreement in place? Mm. I don't know if the league has the ammunition to say you have to sell Alex Morello. And I can tell you from on the ground here, Alex does not want to sell this team. Has he paid all his bills? He has. I I I know that that was a a problem in Glendale. Uh, there's some bad narratives out there. Of course, people think they got kicked out of Glendale because they didn't pay their bills. That's not why they left. They left because they wouldn't sign a long-term lease. So Glendale said it had to move on. I have the Glendale city manager literally on the record saying that and mm-hmm. said it to me again recently. But yeah, that was a problem as well. There have been multiple issues here, right? Tempe didn't didn't work out. They had a deal that they were working on with Arizona State University before that, but they walked away because, among other things, they couldn't put a sports book on ASU land. So this is like the third third go round with trying to find an arena solution for this ownership group, not to mention groups of the past. So you know, let's say they are to to get a rink. The idea for most teams is that once they get a rink, they want to be good when that rink is built. You know, the Calgary Flames kind of have a few-year range here. The Coyotes have 3,964 draft picks. I just checked. That's the exact number. <laughs> what is the plan? Like, are they going to start getting aggressive and trying to win? Are they? Is there a, a deadline for them to try to be good at hockey? I think so. And listen, I, I'm a, I believe in what Bill Armstrong is doing, actually. Yeah. I, yeah. I have seen rebuilds here in the past where they just abandoned shit midstream. We're going to rebuild. Oh, you know what? We, we need to win right now. And it never worked out. I mean, we saw what the John Chica era, while well, they brought in Taylor Hall and Phil Kessel, and they didn't have anything up the middle at, at center ice. So you knew this team wasn't going to sustain any success. Bill Armstrong wants to build sustainable success. He's obviously a scout by trade, and he wants to acquire as many drafts as, assets as possible, both to try and get high quality players, but a volume of players play the numbers game. I believe in that approach. And I, they, if you look at the sort of, this doesn't play out always on the ice, but if you look at the rankings of prospect systems, the coyotes are a top 10 system and they have an insane amount of picks in the first two and three rounds over the next three drafts as well. So they're going to have even more. I think as you start seeing some of those players filter into the AHL and then the NHL, you can see, okay, mm-hmm. here's the future. 
Next season in Tucson, you're going to see a bunch of those guys. So they'll be one step away. How long it takes for them to establish themselves as NHL players, I don't know if that will sync up perfectly with the arena. Right. But that's their hope, at least. We're talking to Craig Morgan, who does a great job covering the Arizona Coyotes at Phoenix Sports and the NHL Network. So, Craig, uh, Bill Armstrong, trade deadline, what can we expect? Are, there, there are some names. There are some quality hockey players that I think other teams would be interested in. Uh, got a couple of names for us. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the obvious ones are Matt Dumba and Jason Zucker, both on expiring contracts this year. I'd be surprised if both of those guys are here after the trade deadline. Beyond that, honestly, I'm not sure that the Coyotes are going to be terribly active. I don't know that they're willing to move a guy like Alex Kerfoot or Karel Vimelka unless they get a fantastic offer. And then I know there's there's been talk the last couple of seasons about guys like Nick Schmaltz, Lawson Kraus. I don't think either of those guys is on the table, honestly. Um, if there's a spectacular offer, you have to listen. GMs always have to listen. But I don't think either of those guys is on the table. I don't think their core guys are on the table. Interesting that you mentioned Matt Dumba. Last time I checked, shot right. Play defense. Uh, if the if there's a Leaf fan out there asking you, could he help the Leafs? What's your answer? Yeah, I'm curious what it would look like in the right role for Matt Dumba. Look, listen, the offensive side of his game that we saw earlier in his career, I think that's gone. But when he came in here, a lot of people I talked to Mike Rousseau about him, how talked about how well he played the second half of the season defensively for the Wild. Honestly, we've only seen that in spurts. Matt Dumba hasn't had a great season. It feels like he's trying to do too much. Maybe he's been put in a role where he has to do too much here. But as you mentioned, he's a right-handed guy. He's got a lot of experience. He's a big hitter who can skate. He can probably help a team in the postseason. And teams are always looking for help on the blue line. Hey, Craig, great stuff, man. We really appreciate your time. Enjoy the game tonight. Uh, and uh, we look forward to having you back on soon. Thanks for doing this. Thank Thanks, Craig. Appreciate me. it, man. Craig Morgan. So like, they're not staying at that mullet arena for five or six years. That's no. not happening. No. No. So here's what we're saying then is there's no alternative to moving from Arizona. Whether they come back to Arizona. No, there's a solution. What's this? Oh, what is it? Uh, you just... Move in with the Phoenix Suns of the NBA. So why has this not been done? What is it? I mean, I know the rink is not built for hockey. It, it, Too bad it, we didn't have it, a guy it, on that would, maybe would have known the answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> it would. It would. Uh, it would need to be, yeah, fixed up. Yeah, but it like renovations. Could, and... Yeah, you just fix it. Yeah. Whatever it needs for hockey, just do it and. Put the money in there in the Put short term. Put the money term. in there in the short term. Yeah. It's a, it's a Band-Aid. Okay. While you start building a new arena. Well, even it's that not probably that takes hard. time. Yeah. Even that probably takes time. So you're in mullet next year while they do the renos or whatever. Sure. Or part of the year. Sure. Part of it. But Let's no, the, 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 just fix the rink and go back to 10, 12, 15,000 fans. You know Jason Zucker? Left winger. Makes 5.3 million. That guy... Loves hockey, loves to score, hates Nick Cousins. Uh, Those things. He, I don't know really what much about his, but he was a good player for a while. With the, wasn't he yeah. on the cup teams with uh, the Penguins? Pittsburgh. He was there, right? Am I, am I remember that correctly? No, maybe think, it would have been after. Yeah, maybe I after feel like he was after. Okay, but no, but, he's he can play. Yeah, but, thirty-two years old. He's got eight goals and twenty-three points this year in and forty-eight yeah. games. You know. Yeah. Not, a, not much there for me. You know, looking through their lineup, trying to pick through parts. You know, with Nick Bustad at $2.1 million, play, like cent him. play center for you. I like him. Okay. That would be a guy. This year and next at 2.1? I think the Leafs should give up a, th a fourth rounder for him. Do you like him more than David Camp? Uh, yeah. It's kind of the same I do. money, yeah. I do. I think he's bigger and heavier. Well, and definitely more offensive upside. Yeah, I I just ha still have envisions 13 goals, of 31 Gudis points this year. Crushing. Well, camp. listen, he'd have crushed Rempe <laughs> or anything. Yeah. Whoever you think the biggest guy in the league is with that. You mean Ron after the Adam. whistle when he didn't know it was coming? Yeah, he probably would have got. Hey, I so I was watching uh, some clips for our show tonight, um, talking about the Leafs and whatever. So I watched the game winner where Gudis uh, sets the pick and he's in Joe Wool's face last year and whatever. Yeah. I mean, 
Playoff hockey is different. The pace of that play, the back and forth, the energy, Listen, it's its jarring the, to watch the, it. There is nothing out there between now and the end of the trade deadline will get you close to getting a lineup that can go toe-to-toe or shoulder-to-shoulder with the Florida Panthers. But, mm. no, there's nothing. Trust me. They're, Can't they're, every they're, part of it. They're, 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 they're mean and they're you like them too much. They're not that good. Oh, oh my no, they're, God. Good. they're really good. Hey. Bonnie, what are you talking they're, about? They're, they're so hey, good. They're That's... tough. And they're they're real tough. They're not manufactured tough. I know. They're, I know. They I know. like it. I like them too. They're okay. a seven hundred winning percentage team. You but know, you, they're, they're not you, running away with the league, is my point. You you need to go and try to just kind of get closer. Yeah. You just gotta get a little bigger and stronger still for this Leaf team to think Absolutely that they can go do. and beat the Florida Panthers. Yeah. And there's still time for that. You're never going to get, you're never going to go shoulder to shoulder with them because at the end of the day, you don't have to. You have way better the, scores. The Leafs have to win against Florida with great goaltending, mm. a great power play, mm-hmm. and stay out of the streets, right? Because and if you, speed, yeah, that's yeah. how you're going to beat Florida. If you're the Toronto Maple Leafs, you're not going shoulder to shoulder, but get one or two other guys that can help you balance you need your it a little bit. Superstars to, to shoot at the of net a lot. Of course you do. Yeah. Of course um, you do. Join Cobb Thread this Saturday, March 2nd, for Donation Day, where $2 from every six-pack of their hot crust buns sold will be donated to over 100 local Canadian charities with a target goal of over a half a million dollars. To celebrate, we're giving away $100 Cobb's Bread gift cards all week. And to enter, text the daily code word 590-590. Today's code word is Hot Cross Buns. Hot Cross Buns <laughs> to 590-590 right now for your chance to win Cobb's Bread bakes fresh in-house all day, every day. And when the doors close, all the leftover baked goods are donated to local charities. The next morning, they start fresh, boys. Today's code word is hot cross buns. Text 590-590. Please tell me you're getting a, like a loaf out of this or something. I, I don't even need it. I actually fully endorse Cobb's Bread. It's yeah. a yeah. wonderful place. I know. Right, to reiterate that every episode. You know, here, it's a wonderful spot. pro Cobb's Bread on this show. Just get us three loaves. Chuck us a scone. <laughs> I, can, I mean, I can, I, boys, I don't get paid a ton, but I can, I can afford the four bucks for a loaf. You can grab a give loaf. Me, give me something tonight here. Is this just going to be a cookie night for the Toronto uh, Maple Leafs? Not a chance. Uh, really? Buddy, four left-handed Ds. Jo- Joe Wolf's six, first. by the way. Six yeah, no Ds. Clayton Joe, Keller. No. This is like seven, eight, or nine goals, is it not tonight? It's a cookie you night. Know what? It's that mindset for the Leafs that kills them. <laughs> I, that's what kills them. I think Leaf Nation needs one tonight because they were really yeah, like high. The seven in a row. They, they just... were, no, they were high and mighty, feeling great, puffing their chests out, and the manner in which they lost on Tuesday night to the Golden Knights shook oh, humbling, shook a few people to their core, including yeah. myself. So it'd be nice just to, they don't have to smoke them, just beat them convincingly. Seven two. No, not even four two, five two, five. Four two with an empty net. No. Against the no. team that hasn't won in Will, a month. Willie Nylander, OT winner. So I'm predicting tomorrow's show they come in, they win 2-1. Kippers be like, ah, this team's no good. He's going to say that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Oh, I'm no. all about oh. the process. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we'll judge the process right? tonight. And I am looking forward to seeing Joe Wall, boys. It's been a long time, and yeah. he's their best goalie. So need him to get hot. You take it easy on just loading him up uh, as being the savior what are you talking here. About? He's their best goalie. He He's does, their starting goalie. Doesn't need that pressure, Sammy. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, Sammy. The guy that doesn't have a phone is listening to Real Kipper and Born right <laughs> playing now. playing piano. Yeah. Domi, uh, Nylander, and Bertuzzi. They need to be much better tonight. And yeah. need a much better game out of them. Two in a row, two stinkers in a row for me. Just start at 200 feet, right? They don't do that, bud. Yeah, they got to learn. They do have to learn. They gotta, everybody's got to learn. That you're talking about. Okay, our thanks to Craig Morgan covering the Arizona Coyotes. When we come back, Frank Saravelli from dailyfaceoff.com to talk Canov and what's out there. Pedersen? Pedersen as well. He had some news on Pedersen, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to get into that. There's so much more when we return as we go national next on The Real Kipper and Born Show. Don't go away. This is our national edition of the Real Kipper and Born Show. I'm Nick Kiprios. He's Justin Bourne. He's Sammy McKee, Derek Brandeo, Jen Rola, Ro, Rolnick, along for the ride as well. In a few minutes, we're going to welcome in Frank Saravelli, Hockey Insider and President of Hockey Content, Daily Faceoff. 
Frank, along with Elliot and a few others, will be real busy between now and next Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, when things shut down on the trade deadline. And I think there'd be a lot of happy people for it. Yeah. So now that you're not like, you know, you don't do the insider role per se, are you watching those guys chasing down stuff that we just sort of like hypothesize about and just kind of enjoying yeah. that you don't have to no, do it? the last few years, uh, for sure. Like you make your calls, you get your info, but you're yeah. not like breaking I, stuff. I, I really do it for the context of the show. Yeah. Which I love, right? Because you, you just hear what, hear what you hear. <laughs> And then you have people like Frank come on or Elliot Friedman yeah. come on and then you bounce it off of him and what are you hearing and what am I hearing? And uh, I hope everyone uh, has a little fun with it. Mm -hmm. X has sort of ruined the, or Twitter has ruined the trade deadline experience. Because like, I remember being younger and watching it on TV and finding out on TV where guys were trading. You're sitting there, you're glued to the TV all day. It's definitely changed the relationship with it, having social yeah. media. But, yeah, I, it's one of my favorite days hey. of the year. There's nothing that gets people going like transactions, boys. In, in the heyday of the show, before, like, Twitter got going, like, I would hear of a trade, and then I'd... Hold on to it. No, I'd, oh. I'd, I'd call the player. And then I could hear him. I, I, the phone picks up. It's his wife. And it's like... Oh, it's that guy on the TV that's doing all the trades. Oh. And I told Craig Conroy he got traded. No way. Yes. Wow. I told him. How'd that go over? He did a promo years later saying, I was watching and then Nick Kiprios <laughs> told me. <laughs> that's good. You know, that's the way it used to yeah. be back then. Yeah. No, you're right though, Sam. Like you don't see it happen yeah. on television as much as, you know, you just find out on Twitter. But yeah. Um, no, it is. I mean, rosters are remade. The Leafs are the perfect example where last year they, they got six or seven new players within a week of the deadline. And, you know, you can reshape the look of a team entirely. We had, okay, go ahead. No, so you, you go. You I was say we had uh, our conversation the other day about Elias Pettersson. <laughs> yes. Um, and, you know, we were just throwing things at the wall. And Frank, who we'll have on, and Elliot have both been kind of weighing in on that all right we're going to pick that up with frank saravelli before we do that we want to make sure everybody knows this hour of real kipper and born brought to you by bet 365 all right let's welcome him in a very busy guy and it kind of started last night frank with uh, the trade of chris Trent, uh, tanov uh first of all uh, your thoughts on the trade and did it set the market price for others to follow now Hey guys, uh, glad to be with you. I would say finally a trade, uh, first one in 26 <laughs> days. And second, I would say as much as I would hope that that TANEV deal to Dallas would sort of springboard or, or open up the floodgates on the market, I, I don't think that it has necessarily anything to do with market price and or what happens next, other than the fact that the Calgary Flames can now focus solely on Noah Hannafin and what happens with him. But when it comes to Tanev, I think the market was more or less set for the most part. When you take a look at the defensemen over the last year that have been traded for a first round pick, it was really clear that Tanev didn't fall into that caliber. And more than that, there's been plenty of market history over the last 10 years to suggest that at 34 with his skill set, that he was certainly trending toward a second round pick. It was the Flames that were really after Artem Grushnikov, who helped uh, spur this thing along, that that's what ended up turning the tide here. So when it comes to some of the other D-men that are potentially available, someone like Sean Walker, who's rocketed up my board from the Philadelphia Flyers, for instance, I don't think the Tanev trade really has any bearing on him whatsoever. But do you believe that the delay up until now was Calgary thinking that they were going to get Toronto to bite on a first rounder? Do you, believe, do, you, do you believe in that? No, I don't think Brad Tree Living was trading a first round pick for Chris Tanev unless there was some kind of larger package that was hugely beneficial for the Leafs that checked multiple boxes. I think they were pretty comfortable in their evaluation that Tanev probably fell into that second round pick bucket. And unfortunately, it's just not a world that the Leafs could be living in unless they found another way to get a second. So I don't think they were holding out hope on the Leafs. I think what they were holding out on was the idea that 
maybe some other team runs into some issue, whether it's an injury or desperation in play in the standings that they decided to step up and, and make it a first. But the other part of it is the flames also really valued Grushnikov as a prospect that they were, you know, considering that to be a huge part of this deal that helped put it over the top. Frank, here in Canada, if you like look at the teams that have a chance at the Stanley Cup this year, pretty much all of them would say, boy, or a right shot defensive D-man, you know, would go a long way. You look around the NHL for those names. They're great in theory, but they almost don't exist on teams that are, uh, you know, making them available. Do you see anyone outside of the box, say, like, uh, that's on a good team? You know, I saw Jonas Siegel had an article that mentioned, like, Will Borgen or Adam Larson. Like, is there a way that we could move past Sean Walker as the best available right D and someone go out and get someone who's an active player on a decent team in a bigger deal. Well, Borny, you just nailed specifically why there's been a hang up for 26 days. It's because a lot of managers have looked at this market and said, Hey, there's probably three or four real bona fide difference makers that are available. And the rest are just kind of, Hey, nice piece, but not entirely sure that I want to trade my future assets for them. And so that's part of where they were at is making calls around the league to try and get creative guys that have term guys that are part of, you know, you mentioned two really intriguing ones from Seattle that they just seem sort of dead set on uh, staying the course of where they're at. And part of the explanation for that is we talked about it on the trade market about how thin that is then take a step back and look forward to this summer's free agent market. And you see it's really thin there too, like in terms of really finding clear difference makers and teams that have those guys want to try and hang on to them because you can go out if you're Seattle and make a trade to move one of those guys now. But the first thing you're going to do when the summer rolls around is try and plot right. and plan to figure out a way to get one of them back. We're talking to Frank Cervelli, Hockey Insider, President of Hockey Content, Daily Faceoff. Uh, Frank, you reported the other day that the Canucks have made significant progress with superstar uh, Vancouver's uh, Pedersen. And what is working on, wh what has been worked on is uh, what you believe is an eight-year contract extension. If we're sharing notes, I had heard that he may be sitting on an eight-year deal in the ballpark of $96 million here. So uh, what's the latest on that from your end? Yeah, that intel certainly lines up with what I have. Uh, I do believe that the AAV on an eight-year deal, if Pedersen and the Canucks can get this across the finish line, is certainly give or take, uh, I would even say potentially on the plus side of 96 million. Um, but it's right there in that ballpark. That's what they're working on. Um, this has been a massive development for Vancouver. This has been something that they've been pining over for the last number of months, trying to get Pedersen to come to the table and get this done. That development happened in the last 48 to 72 hours. There was lots of noise over the weekend about his situation, how perplexed some teams are around the league, and frankly, truly how frustrated the Canucks were that they're saying, hey, we, we'll pay you whatever you want. Just tell us. You want a four-year deal? Great. You want five years? Sure. Eight? Outstanding. Whatever the case may be, they've been trying so hard to get this guy under contract because he's such a big part of their future that – it was really getting to an uncomfortable position. Like they could get through the regular season, no problem, fine. But if you get to day one of the off season, all that does is start the countdown clock on the date that an arbitration filing could be made. Because if you have Pedersen file for ARB and he goes through with it on a one year award, what you're looking at is the end of his days in Vancouver, more or less. And so to be able to get something like that done before you have to, let this combustible market and bubbling cauldron get even more so fired up to just get that off their plate. Not to mention what it can mean planning and plotting wise, even over these next eight days is humongous. So if you're just throwing things at the wall, you, you want to say on PD? I do. Okay, go. Yeah. For why this is taking so long. You know, like what would have conceivably changed? Why has he not been at the table? What has made him, not want to sign prior to now i'm not really good at throwing things this is what we do uh, it's fun let's try yeah all right uh, i'll give you my best guess <laughs> uh just from people who know him really well and have played with him 
Uh, they say that he's a really introverted guy, that a lot of the typical things that you think might move a player or motivate a player aren't necessarily what do it for him. I don't think it's ever really been about getting every last dollar. I don't think it's ever really been about anything other than enjoying to play. And he's a really different guy in that sense that um, he's not, you know, hungry to be the focus of attention. He doesn't need to have the biggest contract. All those things to him are just kind of like, am I playing well this week? Mm -hmm. And that's really as far as his universe extends. So in that sense, I can understand why someone with the expectations that the Canucks had internally this year, if not around the rest of the league, that his focus was just on playing. And then either way, you're probably still going to be a really wealthy man. Right. So if it's not about every last dollar, which most of the time it is, is there any danger for Vancouver Canuck fans that Petey is in a similar situation as Matthew Kachuk was in Calgary where he just springs it on him that I'm, I'd like to move on? Are they, are they, is there a danger in that happening, Frank? For whatever no, reason, I mean, for whatever reason. This would take that out of the mix, right? I mean, this would totally lock him in long-term as a Vancouver Canuck, which is what the Canucks have been after. And it would totally relieve any sort of anxiety and fear that probably exists in the back of a lot of front offices' heads around the league when it comes to star players is players have rights. They've always had some rights but they're flexing those muscles more than they ever have and trying to do things a little bit differently and use that voice and power that they have in a good way, I would say, that just leaves people feeling a tad nervous at, time, at times. And when you can't get an answer, you're essentially being stiff-armed. You're saying, hey, I'm willing to, to roll out the red carpet for you. I will open our wallet. Just tell us what you want. And you don't get an answer, can't get them to the table. That's the part that had been unnerving for Vancouver. So looking at your trade board, Frank, there's still some big names out there. There's Hannafin and Gensel. I know here in Toronto there's interest in a guy like Adam Henrique. Um, we'll start with, I think, Jake Gensel is probably the, the most interesting offensive name. What do you see as a potential destination for him if, in fact, the Penguins want to move this guy? Now they're making a little bit of a push. Well, they're making a push, and I think everyone's really closely watching the Flyers and what's happening there because – Consider their sort of precarious position in the standings. They're only a few points up on some of these teams, like a Washington, for instance, that most people counted off for dead a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. They're f six points back with two games in hand on the Flyers. That's just an example. Pitt is in that same mix. But then consider Ristolainen's out, Jamie Drysdale's out, and you might trade Sean Walker and or Nick Sealer, and all of a sudden you rip off the top four defensemen on that team, and then what? Does that team sink like a rock in the standings that might open up the door for a Pittsburgh or a Washington? So I think there's still a couple things to figure out. And by the way, Washington has two enormous games over the next five days against the Flyers and Penguins. They've got a few players on their list. But when it comes to Gensel, who you asked about specifically, I had gotten some intel and talked about this today. The idea that, oddly or interestingly enough, the Penguins have received more interest in terms of teams, not saying return, but teams than Riley Smith, on Riley Smith than Jake Gensel. Really? So a lot more interesting, interested teams parties i would say when it comes to riley smith than jake gensel which i find fascinating because i think jake gensel point per game player for of the last five years is the premier impact rental forward available it's not really close like this guy is a clutch scorer mm -hmm. he led a postseason in goals to think that teams aren't lining up to try and get this guy to me is kind of interesting how fast does Hannafin move now that they've got Tanov out there? And is it a foregone conclusion he ends up uh, back home in Boston with the Bruins or is Tampa in the mix? Not a foregone conclusion that he ends up in Boston. Uh, I would say that the intel I received is that this is going to be an absolute grind. That it more or less, if you want to explain it in the most simple terms possible, that the Hannafin camp has essentially hijacked this process. That 
of the teams that have expressed interest, they haven't exactly been shy to some of them to whisper, hey, you know, you're not a fit for us to re-sign long-term. So that has taken some teams out of the mix. That's emboldened some other teams that potentially may not have in- or may have interest but don't have the assets to think that they're going to be players in this situation with Calgary. And I think, honestly, it's kind of created a really weird dynamic in this situation moving forward that – I don't know exactly what that list looks like, but I can tell you at least two of the teams that I have confirmed to be on it, Tampa and Florida are teams that he's signaled that he'd be interested in re-signing with. I think some of the other teams, speculation but not confirmed, include Vegas, Boston, and L.A., and I don't know where that would leave some other teams. What about Detroit? What about New Jersey? There's a few other question marks around the league, but the number one player on our board in Hannafin is a pretty much lock to get traded. Uh, The question is really in light of the TANF deal, what can Calgary muster in a return given all that we just talked about? You know, when you're looking at guys who could make a difference in a playoff run, and obviously Noah Hannafin is easily one of those. A name that stands out for me is Pavel Buchnevich in in St. Louis. Really good player, like big guy, 28 years old, 24 goals already this year. Back to the Rangers. Do you see a fit somewhere? Where do you like for him? And what's what's a cost for a player like that? It uh, starts with two first round picks, <gasps> is what Doug Arm- Doug Armstrong has told teams. And for my money, Pavel Buchnevich is the most unheralded point per game player in the league. Agreed. And you say Buchnevich point per game. Go look at his numbers. One hundred and ninety-three games in St. Louis, one hundred and ninety-one points. I mean, it is as close as you can get. And when I look at some of those fits, I, I think the Rangers could be one. The Rangers have also spent quite a lot of time talking to the Anaheim Ducks about the potential of bringing back Frank Vitrano. The Rangers are also in the market for a center, um, so they're in that spot in that market. But I wonder about someone like Buchnevich and Vegas, Buchnevich and Edmonton. We know the Ken Holland, Doug Armstrong connection. We know that Barbashev went from St. Louis to Vegas last year and helped them win a cup. You know, Vegas has been in the market for a winger, whether it's Gensel, whether it's Buchnevich, whoever it might be. They've got lots of different options there to load up if Mark Stone doesn't. Are they going to spend on the stone money? I would if. Stone is on LTIR. I'd be shocked if they didn't spend at least a portion of it. Yeah. Automatic Vegas. Automatic they'd spend that money. So Mm -hmm. Leafs lose out on Tanov, right-handed D. They need a right-handed D. They're just not going to not get one. They have to get one. What are the names out there? Could uh, Could they be knocking on Montreal's door for David Savard? Potentially. I think Montreal is open to just about anything. Um, I mean, going through the list, it's really not very pretty in terms of guys that can make a huge impact. There was some talk about Ilya Labushkin. Could the, could a reunion be in order there? The intel I have on Anaheim is that they're not absolutely pressing to move him. They really like the fit that he's been with Pavel Minchukov. Um, who else? We talked about Walker. Am I missing anyone on the right side? Who's, I mean, I hope so. It's thin. (laughs) I I wish I was as thin as the market. Nick Jensen. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'm out of names. I know. Uh, As I said, I I wish I was as, I wish I was as thin as the right shot. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Anything else uh, off the top of your head uh, that? Is of interest right now? It's, I don't get the sense. I mean, famous last words, you know, kiss of death. I, I don't get the sense at this exact moment in time that anything is is imminent, front burner, but uh, life happens fast. Life is, go look at Vancouver. It comes at you fast. Well, hopefully you get some action around deadline. Save it till the, till the final day for you. All right, Frank, yeah, we'll, we'll let you go. We know you're busy on and off the uh the air and uh on and off the phone calls so uh really appreciate your time thanks frank have a good one guys okay frank saravelli hockey insider president of hockey content daily face off
That's Boy. fine. Boy, they just sit there and just throw names up. Yeah. Every guy's I know. am I packing? Yeah. Turn it, <laughs> their their lives turn upside down. We're throwing out their names well, like it's like, uh, having a beer. Unfounded in many cases, you know, just like wow. oh, what about uh, Nick Jensen? What about him? Sammy, isn't that what you tell me all the day? This is what they do on sports radio. Uh, people love transactions, boys. This is you guys naming off those names to me is why it's such a massive loss for the Leafs to not get Tanev. Like, he is so yeah. far and away the you, best you, right-handed shot you, defense. You know what it is, too, that has had value for him is that he is... And he, go look at all the clips the last couple of years talking about the guy Tanev is... Like that's another thing for, for especially the Leafs. They wanted him in the room. Mm. That is an, that's so underrated. Yeah. Part, part of the setting of cost in the real world is supply and demand, and there's just no yeah. supply and so much demand. Yeah. So I don't think it would have been unreasonable to overspend. I think Calgary got him for a very reasonable, or sorry, Dallas got him for a very reasonable price at $1.25 million against their cap. Yeah, I'm su- I, I really am surprised that, you know, hearing Frank there, who knows so much more than me and I'll ever know, but just that, like, there's no first-round pick offer for him. I guess they love that prospect of the Dallas, that Russian kid or whatever, but to me it's just... Yeah, listen. But I mean, got, like, who's going to have more value to a team, Sean Monahan or Chris Tanev? You, you, yeah, Tanev, I'm sure. You, you well, talk... Uh, good, yeah, he hey, scores, yeah. but, like, you think about what he does for a team, Tanev, you think, I don't know, it's just, it's crazy to me. He, He's yeah. The prospect that Calgary got was probably Dallas's third best defenseman prospect. So he's not an A lister. Mm-hmm. He's a B. So most will have him in the third pair. If this guy somehow develops in the next few years and gets himself into a, a three four, then it's a huge bonus. Mm. But this guy was not a grade A prospect. Mid. Mid, <laughs> so outside of that, that's a great. It's uh, yeah, mid drop. There, there is something to be said about the marketplace right now. Yeah, that that Tanev's was the perception was he was the best available right-handed D by a long by margin, a long shot. Yes, the and they couldn't get a first rounder for him. That's good if you're a buyer at the deadline. You say Tanev didn't get a first. What do you think you're getting a first for? I don't know. Fill in your name. So we led the conversation off with Frank there about the Pedersen stuff. Okay, yeah. I wanted to quickly revisit his I, answers. You wanted to quickly revisit how we started it? Is that what you wanted to do? <laughs> no, like, <laughs> I think there's been a lot of noise around yeah. like, hey, it's almost the deadline. Yeah, there's a What's lot of noise. What's happening here? For sure. Are you signing? What's going yeah. on? Yeah. You know, Fridge did uh, mention something that like it's not ironclad that it's going to happen, you know, but it does seem like it's going to happen here at this point. A signing? Yeah, I, I I hear mixed. Yeah. I, I I I I'm guessing. That's right. all. I'm guessing he'll stay here. He'll play this out longer. But it's funny watching the progression or the evolution of a free agent, yeah. either <laughs> UFA now or RFA. It's. Mm. It's been quite the process over the last 10, 15 years because. RFA used to get you a little bridge deal. Here's your million bucks. We'll pay you later. Well, the, the evolution is that, you know, you didn't have to worry about it until July 1st when they became UFAs. And then there was that kind of, you can get away with telling people, I really like it here and I'd like to stay. And we know it's BS that they're bolting, but they were able to kind of mask it and hide it for many, Get many, there. many, many years. And then the last few that I think got away with it, and off the top of my head is John Tavares. In, in, he didn't in, get away uh, with it. He's lost no. every fan he had in the yeah, state. No, 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 for sure. Okay, okay, but what I'm point. saying is, up it. until he signed with Toronto, mm-hmm. he had everybody believing, and especially in the Long Island area, that he was not going anywhere because he's our captain and he really, really likes it here. And so now you've lost faith in that guy that wants to just tell everybody, yeah, I really like it here, but, you know, so get off my back and don't ask me again. Well, So they lost, there's a lot of trust lost in that. And then it evolved last year to the point where now it's 
like an R, uh, a, a restricted free agent, not unrestricted, can go into his last year and we need to know. And we need to know now. Like, we're not even letting you get to UFA a year from now. We need to know now. So the Matthew Kachuk took us all by by storm, did it not? When yes. it was like, I told them I'm not resigning. We're like, whoa! Yeah. Whoa, where did this come from? And how did this happen? And wow, what a new strategy. Never seen this before in the history of our game where a a free agent, restricted free agent, would come out and be so forthcoming on information. And I'm doing you a favor. Yeah. I'm telling you I'm not coming back. You have the chance to recoup assets for me. But that was, like, in the summer. Mm -hmm. Now Vancouver Canucks are getting ahead of it yeah. because they're starting to ask questions in March yeah. for, for, for Petey. And that is, like... Come on, you got to give us some signals now. Well, you know, this is a risk-averse industry, and I think that trusting that people are going to stay who don't have a contract and just walking them to UFA and crossing your fingers is not really a viable strategy for a lot of people who, again, are risk-averse. So I understand why people want to know, and I think, you know, Frank said himself in that interview, he goes, if you go to arbitration, that's the start of the end because you'd get a one-year award. It's not getting to arbitration. Well, uh, yeah. yeah, but okay. that's the point. Is it's that, not, yeah, it's, we, we know. It's, more, it's, we, it's flushed out well, by that. they then. tell you you suck right? for... <laughs> it's flushed out. Well, yeah, and he's going to get an arbitration award for $12 million one year to walk him to UFA, and then if he doesn't want to sign, you got to deal him anyway. So between now and I don't know when, he's either going to sign a four-year deal, a six-year deal, an eight-year deal, or he's not going to sign at all. And then it's a full panic to trade him in the off season, just like Matthew Kachuk. Yeah, I think like, those are the like options here, Huberto? right? <laughs> you guys want a hundred and fifteen hey, point guy for him? The Uyghur part of that trade was that really good. good. Yeah, he shoots right. He'd be nice. Uh, game time, boys. Game All right, time. let her rip. Uh oh, I don't have it in front of me here. Just Give me one second. Give out some more bread. <laughs> It's game time presented by Bet365. It's game time. <laughs> it's game time presented by Bet365. Visit the app for the latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary. Bet365 must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Now, a couple things in the game you guys are on the TV for tonight, the Leafs and the uh, Arizona Coyotes. Yeah. This is one of the more mind-blowing things I've ever heard. Let's have it. Okay. So, who it was that pointed out the, the stat I put in here that the Leafs haven't got a home regulation win against the Coyotes since October 17th, 2002. That's a long time ago. How many games are we talking? So, they have, they've... A couple of years. They have well, a... Well, I guess at least one year. They're 10-0-2 against the Leafs since 2002. They've, I guess they've lost in overtime twice to the Leafs. But the last time the Leafs, and this is uh, credit to Jeff Bayette who pointed this out, the last time uh, the Leafs beat the Coyotes... Like I said, October 17th, 2002 is also the day Matthew Nyes was born. The prodigal son, the chosen one. The day <laughs> he was born. I know, I know you guys hate those kind of weird numbers. That, uh, is, that insane. is unbelievable. If you had said the day that baby was born, the Leafs won't beat the Coyotes in Toronto until this kid scores the game winner. I mean, you'd have been like, what are you talking about? But the crazy thing is, it's like you have a embodiment of how of long, Here's how it's, long been. It takes. <laughs> it's like I always say whenever I see my buddy's yeah, kids, I'm like, children are the great barometer of time. Matthew Nyes is the embodiment of how long it's taken the Leafs to. Uh, so in saying all that, give me a Matthew Nyes oh anytime God. goal tonight at plus three twenty. There's to never me, been a more sure thing. Yeah, than him scoring the, the tonight. curse of the like the curse yeah. of the Nyes Bino here. He's gonna go out there and knock it off. So give me that. Crazy. Um, I don't know if it's quite as crazy as Tyler Bertuzzi being the first leaf to score a hat trick on his birthday, but it's still up there. <laughs> uh, another really good game tonight. Uh, Winnipeg Jets, Dallas Stars in Dallas. Winnipeg yeah. Jets are streaking a bit here. Back up on top of the uh, Central Division, the Western Conference. Dallas Stars are minus 135 favorites. Give me the Jets as an underdog at plus 115. They're hot, like the way they're playing. And no tan of No today. tan of yet. So... I mean, they didn't trade anybody off the roster. It's not going to affect yeah. them. But I just, hey. I love the way the Jets are looking. And that's Danev's going to wear Klingberg's three. Eh? They're going to pull a, out of the rafters. That's a, <laughs> a visa issue, right? Yes. For yeah, Tanev, <sighs> could have come to Toronto. Would've been fine. Uh, and the last one I had, 
since we talked about the streak with the Leafs and the Coyotes, I mean, there's something to this. It's a long streak. It's crazy. If you want to, is it spring, that the Leafs have been bad since 2002? No, I mean they've been good for seven <laughs> years. They come here <laughs> once know, a year. If you want to sprinkle on the 13 in a row loss, Arizona Arizona Coyotes against the Leafs tonight, it's plus 195. So I think they're taking into effect that they know there's some greater power in, uh, involved here. 13 uh, in a row is a long streak. They're going to win eventually. Maybe it's fact, here. Yeah. On January 1st, the Arizona Coyotes had 40 points. The Leafs had 41. They're one point apart in 2024. It is not yet March, and they are 22 points apart wow. now. Wow. Big that, swing. That escalated quickly. Yes, no kidding. Uh, and that was Game Time, presented by Bet365. Visit the app for the latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus, Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Okay, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll get into a little Zach Hyman no. talk. Oh, God. Yeah, you okay over there? Tough Leaf show, Sick. for all He's yeah. having a bad week. Yeah, great. You want to talk about how, you know, <laughs> Michael Bunting's lighting it up for Carolina this year? This is my nightmare. We're giving Zach some love here because uh, he's earned every bit of it. Uh, 40th goal last night. Nice to see Kadri finding it in Calgary, too. Oh, oh, him? Yeah. <laughs> two, two assists by Connor McDavid. What's he now? Like, is it like one goal and like 25 assists? Yeah, he's on an unbelievable tear <laughs> of non goalness. All right, Hold plenty up, more. Winner. When we return, the real Kipper and Bourne. Nick Kipper is Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, Zach Hyman. Mm. Hey, before, 40th before goal we get into that, of the season. Before we get into that, we got to talk about this Chris Tanev quote, quote that I just trickled across my, yeah, across my live news here on air. Some quick math from the newest Dallas Stars on why he picked number three. Three is kind of half of eight. <laughs> <laughs> Tanev, to be clear, is wearing three in Dallas because it's kind of half of eight. That don't make no sense. <laughs> I can't tell you how much the- I love that. That's the most hockey quote I've ever heard. Yeah, every time, every time I throw out um, like uh, numbers out, yeah. like contracts, it's like ballpark. Yeah, right. It's like, yeah, so it's it's in like the vicinity a, of it's, half. It's, it's in the ballpark of yeah. half. Kind of eight. Of half. I honestly, oh, though, I truly man. do love it because it's what you want man. your shutdown demon, the way of thinking. Yes. You'd be like, I don't deal in exactitude or whatever. It's about half. I don't know. Kind of half. <laughs> All right, Hyman. Sorry, Kipper. 40th goal. Only two other guys have scored that many goals that fast in a season in Edmonton history. Uh, can I guess? Yeah. Wayne Gretzky. Oh, my God. <laughs> Joke you okay, off. Kid? Uh, Yari Curry? Yeah. Yeah. Connor hasn't? McDavid hasn't done think, it? No, I don't think so. Wow. I was going to try to go off the board to somebody, but I thought... Gretzky, probably... Curry, Hyman. So Hyman has 40 goals in 56 games. Hmm. Um, working out pretty nice. Sam tweeted last night about how, you know, his Leafs fan boo-hoo about... It wasn't, well. even, it wasn't even a Leafs fan boo-hoo. It was... I said he was. It was highly criticized, and he's got to be one of the best free agent signings ever. It's remarkable. I didn't. There was no boo-hoo about it. And then in the mentions, I got a little boo-hoo. I said that him and Nazem Kadri should have been career Leafs, but other than that, not really boo-hoo. He's just thirty-one years old. He uh, had twenty-seven his first year, thirty-six his next, forty, and on pace for fifty-eight now this season, alongside Connor McDavid. I saw people saying to Sam and saying to other people, "Oh, McDavid, McDavid, you know, doing it for him. McDavid sure helps." But he doesn't help, you know, score you. If he ends up with 55 goals, I mean, give him credit for He's in the right place. He's in the right, at the right time, right place. Like, for me, when I watch him, for him to go into the areas that he does and still hold an edge or a body position and how strong his stick is, is fun to watch he's a coach's dream he goes to the net hard he stops in the paint he puts a stick on the ice he does all the things coaches are like, do this and you'll be rewarded Four check back check pay and check. he's a product of hard work he's put in time off the ice and video whatever like coaches love this guy did, did we find a clip i got a, i got a clip no, about him playing with okay, david we'll listen to i got zach. a stat for you okay. when you're ready yeah let's listen, listen to, to zach, zach first. play with the best player in the world so I'm very fortunate and, and very aware that I'm, I'm pretty lucky. It's obviously one of the, the big reasons I chose to come here was to have the opportunity to play with, with Connor. And, but you're good at it. 
Yeah, I, I guess. But, I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. Obviously, you, you learn. And I think a lot of that just has to do with communication. Like, he thinks the game so well. So if I'm able to, to you know, think it with him and, and get to spots that, uh, that he can get the puck to, then, you know, we'll have a good chance to, to score. Pretty simple, right? A very good chance. Yeah. So, like, I'm not saying like McDavid is not to credit, you know, for McDavid. McDavid, or sorry, but Hyman has scored without McDavid. There's Chris. So I just want to say it's not on McDavid. However. Do you have the uh, assist? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. McDavid has assisted on 26 of his 40 goals. Mc that Jesus. is the second highest one player to another player combo in the NHL this season. Marner. May I guess the first one is? Yeah. <laughs> Matthews, so what you're one. saying is Hyman and Matthews, same guy. Same guy. <laughs> They're basically the same player. So, yeah, 26 uh, for McDavid and Hyman. Yeah. But it's safe to say if Hyman stayed in Toronto, he wouldn't be scoring 40 no. goals right no, now. No, but he might score 40 in a season. He may not score 58, but he could get to 40. Yeah, not with Matthews or Tavares. Yeah. No. Well, let's see. How many did he score with the Leafs? 30. Mm. Did he get 30 in a year? Uh, Not even close. No. He never had more than 21. Yeah. Like 21 in 51 games. So he had a 30 goal pace. Like, we are talking about a guy in, in McDavid who, like, and he's talked about this already. Yeah. And it's not like he's consciously thinking, shoot less and pass more. He takes what he sees. Yes. It's a natural reaction, right? Yeah. But there is a sense there that he's an elite. Passer he's and, the most elite passer. He's the most right? elite man in the league. Yeah. He's top man. <laughs> he's as I believe they number would say one guy in England. Yeah. Um, yeah I, Seventeen like if primary had, assists. If you took Mitch Marner right now mm -hmm. and put him with McDavid all season long, I, I got to think Marner's a fifty goal scorer. That'd be a hell of a line. Be a lot of right? a lot of deception and speed. No comment. You don't think he'd score fifty? I do. Course. Yeah, I mean it's it's conceivable, but he would have or to they... change his, his mindset, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's no, how you no, be playing sure. ping pong. I mean, so much game. No, no, you're right. <laughs> you you're know, right. It's... Like yeah. Hyman's not. You would never put them together because they're both distributors. I don't know. It's, uh, Hyman's learned how to get to certain areas where it's not a give and go and give it back to ninety seven. Yeah. It's like give, give God. He's a trained give dog. Go to the, the blue net. paint. Stick down. Yeah. Do your thing. You know. But and he's yeah. smart enough to do it to his credit. I think back to when we had Rob Brown on. I don't know how long ago that was to talk with the Oilers, but he said like he watches them every night, and he said that he does just as much for him in terms of creating space and getting pucks back for him. Like, I just hate. The, like he scored forty goals. That's great. Maybe it's above whatever his perception, like whatever you think he would score. Clearly, yeah. But he's really good. And really important to Effective that. And it's like, guy, he's yeah. awesome. And he's, and he's worth every penny of that contract. Probably not twice it, but, you know, cut it in three and a half. And I don't know what you want to do oh. here, but more. He if is, he was going into UFA right now. Yeah, oh, yeah. He, uh, uh, he, uh, Reinhardt. He's got 28 games, uh, playoff games with the Oilers, and he has 14 goals in those 28 playoff games. That's pretty nice numbers. Uh, another guy I want to bring up for the Oilers. Watch that game last night. God, Nuge is so good. I like the Nuge, too. Nice that, back check, eh? That play comes back on the breakaway. Yeah. He's just, he is a really yeah. important. Is that on under, Thomas? Yeah, underrated Thomas guy. Too, I don't like know a, why he slowed down. Because he, he thought he was going to shoot it. Yeah, he's yeah. just like, no, you got to maintain your speed there. Yeah. He, I think he just got into the. He did the Patrick Kane and OT, like, no, I'm going to slow this thing no, down. He's, like, he's went to the driving range, <laughs> right? Just yeah. dropped the bucket of balls and. Yeah, a little too casual. Shoot it. Yeah. All right, we have uh, Bruce Cassidy. Oh, yeah. is making his return to Boston tonight. And, uh, you know, that's a big game for him after getting fired. A great quote out of him. Second, It's the second one because he went there last year, right? And then yeah. he got asked about it again. Oh, so right. if we can uh, play that, Derek. What's different coming back, you know, this time around? Are the emotions different, similar? Uh, different. I think last year there was the unknown. Yeah. Didn't know what would happen. You come back in here, you know, you get let go. So... You, know, you don't know if you're going to get booed out of the building or a nice hand. So, uh, anyway, we got that over with. Um, it's nice to come back with a big, big, nice, shiny ring on your finger, too. That's a, another, always a good visit with that. Did and, any, did any that's awesome. Yeah, just so you know, I'm coming home with a big old ring. I like Bruce Cassidy a lot. I do, too. I think he's a hell of a coach. And I got no problem with that. You know, it's kind of a fun. No, it's it's awesome. Fine. You don't get to fire someone, have them win a ring, then not come home yeah. and yeah. show it. And, you know, he's. 
Big, nice, shiny ring on your finger. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it didn't end on the greatest terms. Yeah. And hardly ever does when you what, get fired. What year did he get fired after? What, I'm trying to think. It was, yeah, so it's his second year with them. With Vegas this year, so I'm just thinking back to what happened there. But it wasn't it wasn't a good. It finish. wasn't the year they won. Montgomery was there the year they won 100, 136 points. Yeah. So before that, I can't remember the, their playoff run the year he got fired. Mm, I don't know. They get eliminated in the first or second round every year, pretty much, or have for a while now. Yeah, they do. They're lucky they got that one early, because they would have the biggest choker yeah. resume ever. Yeah. Because you and you can never say it because they got the cup in this era of hockey, which how which is that a was reminder, 15 years ago. If teams get it. You can it, kill that reputation for your Leafs. You, you just got to get it. Got to get it. Although they... And you say it was all part of the process. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. New York Rangers last night. It was a quiet game uh, or a quiet night in terms of the amount of games last night. But we did watch a little bit of the Rangers against Columbus mm -hmm. where Panarin scored twice uh, with a revenge win against uh, Columbus. But uh, no Matt Rempe. Well, fight. no fight, yeah. No fight. Although there now, was a scrum. Are you guys happy about Yeah, there was a... There's a scrum, and they had the yes. lion tamers holding him yeah. back from getting involved. Yeah. But now, he played career it, high seven minutes and 46 seconds last night. You know, I love how much we're talking about this guy. Never, he's our favorite player. Yeah, he's our show's you, new favorite player. Yeah. Oh, listen, I wrote an article today uh, you? On, on him. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. This is... I this love is, it. Kid has the 30 minutes in the league, and he's uh, 30 minutes in the Toronto league. Star and, and, front and, page. Uh, this guy had the biggest scrums all week in the Ranger dressing room. Okay, so there, there's, there's a thirst, there's a market <laughs> for this guy right now, yeah. and I wanted to acknowledge it without forgetting that we're in a new era here, and there's a constant watchdog. On this behavior and the amount of hits that you, a guy can is take to Paro's his head. Who's the watchdog? Who's the watchdog? But he, every fan watching the oh, game. I see. Okay. Yeah. Every reporter, every fan sitting there going, okay, we're not going back to even my era where I fought and got all the things that he's getting now in terms of accolades from teammates and coaches. But nobody was sitting there going, hey, Careful, kid. Careful, son. You can get hurt. They're going, we love this kid. He's right? still fight anyway. Well, there was yeah. nobody, nobody telling me about all of this, but this guy, from the moment we saw him drop the gloves against Matt Martin, uh, there's going to be a constant reminder. There's going to be watchdogs, guardian angels, whatever you want to call them, in his face saying, buddy, you can get hurt doing this. Yeah. So that's the okay. biggest difference between then and now. But the, the, the energy, the thirst, and like... What do teams do now moving forward if this guy's going to be in the lineup playing eight minutes a night and maybe taking runs at some of your players like uh, Bastion uh, with uh, Bastion in, uh, Bastion in, Jersey. Uh, in Jersey, man. He yeah. just, uh, it's a scary thought. This guy, they, they think he might be six, eight and a half now. He might have grown this morning. He's grown uh, since they drafted him an inch and a half or something like that. One of my really good buddies, Dave, was at the game last night at Madison Square Garden. He was texting me about it and he just said, like, he had a play where he banged it off the end glass. The second he touched the puck, place just, like, erupts. He's like, the whole talk of his whole section, everybody's just talking about Rempe. He's, like, sweeping the... Yeah. He's sweeping New York. I saw him yeah. last night go down on a two-on-one. He, 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 he missed a pass. Uh, he, when he gets the puck, it's not like a, a panic. It's not like he's chopping it in about ten different yeah. pieces. He had, a, he had a calmness a little bit when he had the puck. Yeah. You know how this goes, though, right? Like, I mean, now... There's a lot of press for a kid who's got no time in the NHL. We'll see if he can develop into an everyday wow. useful guy. That's it. Is it 15 minutes of fame here? Yeah. Or is he going to turn this into a, a, a career, a role, uh, an energy guy? Can he put the fear in God in some of the opponents? Because I, I think he can. Yeah. Yeah, but, I, you know, I, I think it's good to note, you know, and I think he's even said it, too, that, you know, he wants to be a player, too. You know, you can't play in today's NHL just being a puncher. You cannot. It doesn't so, exist. Let me ask you guys. Rangers, Leafs, Saturday night. Hoping. See, first reaction. I am. And you are with probably, I don't know, where would you have that percentage now of the Sammies out there that wants to watch Ryan Reeves and Rempe fight Saturday night on Hockey Night in Canada. Where are you? 50-50? No, it's way, way higher than that. 85? Yeah. Yeah. 90? Yeah. Yeah. 
I'd love that. I mean, I mean, how many people, if you're in the building, are you going, would you like to see them fight? Or going, no. 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 Yeah, like I'm sure the people, all the, the lubricated crowd on Saturday nights can be like, no. Careful. I'm not careful. No, be careful, fellas. Be careful. Hey. I'm here for the safety. <laughs> That's when they pull out their ticket stop and go, 300 bucks. You're darn right I want to see this. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so we're getting a lot of response to our conversation about Tanev's number. And people are saying that a three is literally half oh, of an A. Oh, God. No, I feel so stupid. But it's so, like, it's like you cut a. I get it now. I feel, I'm so embarrassed that we but, ripped uh, this guy. But and hold that's on. The point. We sure? So I just trusted you. Don't that, do that three and a half. Well, is are you we sure, sure that's what he yes, meant? Yes. That's to our, eight. Like, are we giving three, him too much credit? Can I get the quote again? Uh, three is kind of half of eight, is the quote. Yeah, that's what he means. You think? Well, why would he, he say if you cut an eight, you get a three? I get it. You know, he's a hockey player with limited <laughs> vocabulary. He's just getting the words but out with what he can. We're, he's going, it's a half of an eight. We're three guys up here with a limited vo vocabulary. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here every day. <laughs> I got, oh, I got rocks for Rain's voice. That makes sense. Anyway, uh, pretend that conversation yeah, didn't happen. I don't think I don't think guys, that's what he meant. Somebody's got to be smarter than me up here on this desk, please. There's, a, there's supposed to be a producer. Up. Producer, oh, supposed to help the you. talent. Step up. <laughs> Step up. Oh my All right. god! All right. So uh, unbelievable night in the NHL tonight. Mm. Unbelievable night. Vegas and Boston is Great you know game. one of those potential Stanley Cup preview type games. Mm -hmm. Islanders Red Wings is a wild card battle, but also Red Wings might pass the Leafs. The big game for both teams. Mm -hmm. Um, also on the dog, yeah, the Leafs are playing, which I know you find <laughs> there's, a interesting. there's a hockey game. Yeah, uh, Tampa Bay, Florida, all the Atlantic teams yep. are, are in action. It's going to be a really good and night. So. Late game after Leafs action, if you're into that sort of thing. L.A. Kings oh, yeah. in uh, Vancouver. L.A. Vancouver. That's just looking yep. for the other games. Yep. That's that's going to be a big one too. Yep. Pittsburgh at it with Seattle. Lots of good hockey tonight. I, you and me are going over to the desk right now to talk about uh, Toronto, Arizona. Yeah, and I'm getting hungry. Oh my god! Should we order in? What's what's the deal here? Souvlaki? What are you after? If I'm <laughs> call the king of the Dan for <laughs> King of the Danny doing? <laughs> George Galinikos on the mission. Yeah, Georgios. Get him in the Georgios. <laughs> Souvlaki. It was really, you Greek? No, it was back in the line. It was really good. <laughs> it was amazing. High quality stuff. Uh, um, right. Oh no, where are you? Uh, so what is it tonight that's got your attention? Going into the evening here. Set the stage on our way out the door. Uh, yeah, I'd probably have to go with uh, Vegas and Boston, I think, has got, uh, it's got my attention here because Boston, like, if, you, if you're the Leafs right now, are you Rangers or the Bruins. Who would you rather see in the playoffs? Like, assuming Florida yeah. wins the Atlantic, would you rather yeah. get Boston or the Rangers? What do you think? Boston looks Boston. to me like uh, they went hard. They went hard at the start with great goaltending. Mm. Yeah, a little vulnerable. A little vulnerable right now. At least they, play them twice coming up. A lot, yeah. Three, two, and five in their last ten for the Bruins. All right, get us out of here. All right. Make sure you're sticking around. Is Justin and I will uh, be on air in about what half an hour mm -hmm. on uh, Leafs Regional tonight. Arizona Coyotes, Toronto Maple Leafs, but uh, like the boys were saying, ton of games tonight. Pick yours, enjoy it, and we're back tomorrow. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Off the rails Friday it tomorrow? Friday tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Doug March McClain. 1st tomorrow. All wow. right. Almost golf season, boys. All right. Ooh. Enjoy the rest of your leap year. We're out of here. <laughs>